Hi there, folks. And today we're going to focus on Project for the Web and actually doing some reporting with the tool set. And for those who are not aware uh, what Project for the Web is, it's a you know, relatively new browser-only app designed to work seamlessly with Microsoft Teams and Dynamics tools. And uh, since it's cloud-based, uh, project managers, sponsors, and participants only need a web browser to begin collaborating with your team members and to contribute on projects immediately. The, uh, the new service, uh, which is for occasional part-time you know, project managers and self-directed work teams, is intuitive like Planner, flexible like Excel, and embedded with uh, Microsoft Project's scheduling functionality. So you know, the, the tool really, since being released in October, still is in an infancy. Uh, so really expect that the tool set will um, grow considerably over time with, with functionality. So that's what we're really expecting from the tool set is to see its features and functionality increase uh, significantly over time. Now, um, <clears throat> so, so today I'm gonna be focusing on the reporting aspects of it. So right, right now I'm, I'm actually in the, uh, the Power Apps interface you can see here, rather than you're probably more familiar with maybe the project based interface where some folks would in, initiate your projects. In, the, in this interface, which is leveraging some of the Dynamics tools. Yeah, the, the benefit I have here is I can actually see across my projects. I have my My Active Projects view, I have the All Projects view, and the Closed Projects view. So there's you know, a number of ways I can uh, view things here if I were to configure these views different um, to filter out certain projects. I have a number of projects. I can change these views, add fields. Uh, the one thing we did in the prior video is we actually, uh, with this tool set, same as you can with Microsoft Project Online, is you can add custom fields. Therefore, when I click on Audit Tracking Solution, it brings up you know, what you might have correlated with project detail pages previously. Now we're looking at certain forms, the information form, general section estimates and actuals. <clears throat> the thing I want to point out here is that what we did is we added a project phase field, a department field, and a program field because in our particular demonstration scenario, we wanted to be able to um, use our specific phases that the project's in, as you can see here, currently it's an execute. We also wanted to be able to assign the project to a specific department, right? And we also wanted to be able to associate with a uh, program. And that way, with our enhanced reporting, we'd be also able to slice and dice these projects by those three project level attributes. Okay. Now, the other thing you might be aware of is that Microsoft did release a Power BI template for Project for the Web, right? So it's, so it's really great and it helps us get started with the tool set. And I'm gonna to go to my folder where I have that template here and you can see it right there. And we'll provide a link for this. You'll see it in the body of the verbiage for this particular video. Right now, uh, Power BI is launching. And when it launches in my window here, it'll prompt me to yeah, actually enter in some URL information to be able to establish a connection to the power, um, excuse me, to the data source for this particular environment. And there it is. I was looking for, um, you know, the, the part of the domain and actually I copied a little bit more than I really needed to. So let me go back. Uh, I want to copy up to the dynamics. So I just want that right there. And we'll go back here and we'll go ahead and it looks like I need to put the period back in. So that's what we need to enter in here. We'll go ahead and click load. If everything goes according to plan, we should see a refresh taking place and immediately the tool set's gonna go ahead and load the data. We're not gonna spend a lot of time in here because there are, you know, by now most people probably are aware of this template. If you're not, you know, we'll, we'll spend a couple minutes showing you what the default template looks like and it looks like it's just about there now. And here we come. You see at the bottom, we have a number of tabs here. And those are all the different pages in this report. First page is a portfolio dashboard. We can see the number of projects by the progress of the tasks, the effort by the project, and then the projects by the project manager. Everybody's currently, all the projects are managed by a single project manager here. Uh, then we have the individual projects down here, the manager start, finish, the amount of progress, the effort hours, and some other data points. We have a timeline view, which is gonna show the overall duration, the amount of progress, portfolio milestones. Some, so some interesting, definitely some potentially interesting views here, right? Resource tasks by project, task by status, uh, resources by the different projects. Um, so for some default reports, these are really very helpful, in my opinion, uh, to get us started. So 
ultimately, right, you're going to create your own custom fields and you're going to want to be able to see some other interesting information. So therefore, if I go back to portfolio dashboards, um, you know, wouldn't I rather see projects by program or potentially effort by department or maybe projects by phase? And those would provide uh, management, you know, a little bit, a little bit meaningful view to look at the information. So I could have a couple different portfolio dashboards, and that's really what my goal is here, is to create a dashboard that provides a little bit more meaning to it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to exit out of this one, and I'm going to show you a version of the dashboard that I I just did a little formatting to it, change the colors up a little bit. Same exact thing, but just change the colors to, to match the ones that we use for our website here. Is anyone project by project, uh, progress, effort by project, and projects by uh, project manager? What I want to do in this case is uh, I would like to go ahead and use those custom fields that I created. Now I'm connected to the same data source. Um, what I need to do is I need to refresh this and make sure that you know has this uh, environment copied or brought in those current fields that I created here. And by doing a refresh, I'm ensuring that the Power BI uh, desktop here is connecting to the OData feed. OData feed is retrieving the latest of the greatest, including those new custom fields that I created, as well as the currently selected values in them. Okay, and then it looks like we have our information. Uh, so what do we wanna do here, ultimately? Well, I'm gonna go ahead and, and navigate to my model here. You can see the link in the left-hand navigation. When I hover, it says model, we'll click on that. And here are the tables in here, and there are a number of different tables here. What I can do is I can zoom in just a little bit. Here you can see the zoom bar in the bottom right. And here's my projects table. And the projects table is gonna be the one that has those attributes that I need to get in here. However, notice that you know, it doesn't have the fields. Well, what do you do to get the fields? Well, I can't, um, I can't modify the fields that are currently a part of this table. So I can't add fields to it. The best thing that I can do at this point is I can actually bring additional fields in here or additional data in here. So I can actually go ahead and get additional data here. All right. So what I'm going to do is navigate to get data and then more. And um, what I'm going to do is this uh, project for the web actually uses the common data service. That's one of the really great features of this tool set. And uh, several, a number of Microsoft applications are going to be using the common data service, which is one of the powerful aspects of it. And there it is. We'll go ahead and click connect. And now what I need to do um, is actually go back here and get the entire URL this time. And we'll go ahead, paste that in. We'll click OK. And hopefully we'll be able to establish a connection. And when we do, We'll see some information be refreshed here, and there's the org, it, it rendered to the org. Click on entities, and it will show me all the different entities, and under here will be the different tables that I want. And ultimately, I want to find msdyn underscore projects, because that is my project table. There it is right there. And so when I click on that, it will render the table off to the right here. And when I scroll over here, you know, ultimately, one record for each project. Uh, that's how many projects I currently have in here. And um, if I scroll over, I can see all the different data points in here. Um, just n not necessarily in any particular order, but there's program. There's So it's interesting, it brings the fields in twice, right? So it brings in the department ID, then it brings in the display name of it. ID is uh, aligned with the option set. So what I want to do is I actually want to use the display fields. Department display is right there. Program display is right next to it and then we should have phase display right next to that. So those are the fields that I ultimately want. What I'm gonna do is click load. <clears throat> that will bring that field into my display here. There's MS DIN project. So there we go, let's bring that up. There we go. I'm not sure what that was all about. However, all right, so I do need um, one important ID that I need here is the project ID. So I definitely want to make sure I don't remove that. So ultimately what I'm going to do here is I'm going to remove fields from this table. And the reason I want to remove fields is because the more data that's transferred back and forth between project on, uh, the project for the web database in the cloud and my local instance of, of my report, the longer it takes to refresh the data. Therefore, we want to get rid of everything we're not going to need here. So remember, my fields are at the very beginning of this report. 
<clears throat> what I'm going to look for, there's the project ID right there. Therefore, let's go ahead and shift select, delete from model, delete. And there go all those fields. There's my project ID. I select the first field above it all the way through just under the phase display. Get rid of those. Now we're going to click on those items because I really don't need those. Just kind of more noise. And we're going to leave uh, those alone. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to change these items. We'll go ahead and change them when we get into the system later. Change the names of these. But um, I think we're good for now. What I want to do, however, is I want to create a relationship between this project ID and the one in the projects table. So I'll click and hold on this one in the project table I just created, bring it over to that one and let go. And you'll notice a, a link was just created here. If I were to double click on it, it will bring up a dialog box showing the relationship that's been made and the edit relationship dialog. It's showing the cardinality is one to one, which is exactly what I want. The filter direction is both ways, which is exactly what I want. Therefore, we're going to leave that alone. Now what I can do over here in the far right is I can actually name these, rename these fields, uh, which would really make sense. Though know, I could actually call this project buttes, right? And um, there we go. So it's just gonna be a little more meaningful of a name here. Well, we'll call that department and we'll just keep this simple, right? Call that program. We're going to call this project phase. And there are my fields. Um, I'm not really bothered by project ID being called that, the default name of the database, because I'm not going to be using it for anything anyway. But that is good. I'm really happy with my table the way it is. I have it connected. Therefore, uh, let's go ahead back to the designer. And I can click on report in that navigation in the left. And it brings me back to that portfolio dashboard that I was on originally. No, I like the overall format of this report. Therefore, what I'd like to do is start with this report for a foundation. And I can actually go down to the tab down here, right click on it. And from the pop-up dialog, you can just click on duplicate page. And this just creates a duplicate of that report. And I think, uh, where did I put it? Yeah, I put it way, way on the end there, which is fine. Let's go ahead and rename that something more meaningful. I'll just call it duplicate, uh, excuse me, portfolio dashboard, Dan. Now remember the things I wanted to do. I don't want, um, let's see, we want effort projects by department, number of projects by department here. Let's take care of the projects by program, uh, projects by project manager. What we're gonna do is we're gonna change that to program. So what I need to do here is go into the projects table and deselect project manager and go to my project attribute table and select program. Look at that. Uh, so basically it's showing me the number of projects per each program. Uh, the other thing I need to do is actually change the title here. Projects by project manager. I need to change that too. Right. I need to say that by program. So that's going to be my title. Projects by program. Okay, that one's done. The next one I want to take care of is effort by project. Again, expand the projects table because that's where the uh, original items are, are taken from. And we're going to remove project name. And instead, we're going to select department from my project attributes table. And then we're going to say effort by department, right? So again, we need to go into visualizations, click on the format. That is the title, effort by department. And after I finish typing in, I press enter. Not that you need to, I think it refreshes automatically. And um, then the next one we have is projects by phase here. And so the thing we're gonna need to do here is actually um, make a change. We need to create a, a field in this particular case. We'll type in the new measure and uh, we're just going to call this project count 
And I just call it project count attribute because it is on my attribute table, not that you had to. Um, and actually this is gonna wanna use the project ID. So I select project ID, put a closing paren there, press enter. And it creates my project count field. You can see it there. Awesome, we're looking good. Making a lot of progress here. So what I need to do now is we'll click on projects by progress and we're gonna get rid of both of these. Bam, bam. And then what we're gonna do is this. I'm going to use my, and we'll find my face and my count there. And there it is. So now it's showing me the number of, of projects by the different phases I have. I have three initiation, six in execution, right? Two in control. And what I wanna do is again, change the title, right? Projects by face. And so we're, we're getting there, right? Projects by phase, effort by department, projects by program. Now let's go ahead and change these up. This doesn't need to be project manager anymore, right? Maybe we can make this program. So we can get rid of that, change that to program. And then the same thing with this. Why don't we make this, um, let make this one phase. And we'll go ahead and uh, first we have to get rid of that. And then we'll bring in phase. And what about department, right? So what I did is I selected the filter and I did control C, control V. All that is, is it's copy and paste. And I'm gonna bring it right over there and position it. So it looks like it's level. We'll bring that over. Okay. That's gonna be department. Look at that. Awesome. So if I were to um, you know, select by department, right? So I can see my filter's working. That's great. Okay. Filter by this. I know we have six in execution. Okay. That looks good. And program, if we were to do infrastructure involvement, I should have just a couple, which I do. And uh, there you go, folks. That is your completed modified Power BI template provided by Microsoft. And like I said, I'll provide that uh, a link to that template uh, in the description of this video. Hope you learned something good today about Project for the Web and uh, stay tuned for other videos on the tool set. We'll have a resource management capabilities coming up very soon. Thanks very much and uh, have a great day.